Philippines, Philippines, another Philippines, uh, another Philippines video, another, 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 another Philippines, another, another Philippines. Hopefully this now um, is discussing that the last one. So the most exotic meat, the most our last eating monkeys. Y'all that's eating curious George is crazy, bro. I to people for 24 hours, dining on the most daring dinner I've ever seen in the Philippines. Do some people keep these as pets? Yes. But they also eat them. Yes. But first, let's up. back up. On our last Filipino food adventure, we went deep in Manila, taking on urban foraging in search of this country's most taboo food, pog pog. You get some big pieces that have a lot of protein, but then there's also this yeah. that we certainly have eaten. Now, I see. we're hitting the road and traveling north Fuck to Luzon, the Philippines' bro. largest island, in search of food that is truly shocking. Luzon is a huge region in the Philippines, and this trip is all about going as far north as we can. That's literally completely different area than the slums of the Philippines. You see all the trees and shit. They ass look, they, they damn near camouflage. You can't even see they cribs now, no. Can until we hit our final destination in Buscalan Kalinga. But for that, today we have a special side mission. Welcome to Pastolan. This place is home to the first people of this nation. The indigenous Aita tribe, said to have arrived here over 30,000 years ago. You slaughter the chicken and then chuck the whole thing into the fire. Here, just a few hours from the big city, you'll witness a clash between rapid modernization and customs that go back generations. We're doing the bad thing for real. Is there a certain amount that you're hoping to get today? I mean, one is pretty good. We could just, or even half of one. Today, I'm on a mission to learn more about this important culture. Right now, we're doing what I call my worst nightmare. I want to know how they live. Oh my God, okay. And how they eat. Bat wings or chicken wings? What do you prefer? Including a meal. No, that's what I was doing in the cave to get some fucking bats. I mean, I could have sworn bets. Govi came from fucking bets. Well, this man don't give a fuck what he eat, bro. Made from a forbidden food. Yeah, he must have the best health care available. Insurance or something, bro. This is essentially no way, a monkey drumstick. But before that, how about some breakfast? Good morning. Good morning, Sunny. Eating with us, two Aita tribal members, Rosaria and Sam. It probably goes without saying, this is probably the most normal thing we're gonna eat today. Most familiar to people watching the video right now. We call it manok bakal, wild chicken. Breakfast prep is underway. First, two wild chickens are cooked in two different ways. A roasted version called sinila and a soup version called siniga. A treat prepared by our host and tribal hunter who goes by the name Dandy. Is this a preparation you've had your whole life like this? Wait, what's he just cooking that shit? Wait, and a soup version called sinila. He's cooking that in a fucking bamboo. What the fuck? Breakfast bamboo chicken soup. Mmm. Mm. Read is fundamental. Breakfast bamboo chicken soup. Iniga, a treat prepared by our host and tribal hunter who goes by the name Dandy. Is this a preparation you've had your whole life like this? Oh, well, yes. After slaughtering, he defeathers the bird. But instead of waiting for water to boil, he chucks it in the fire and calls it a day. Because sometimes we are lacking off water. No need to waste water or get a pot or heat it up or wait, just chuck it in the fire. Yes. Aita's cuisine is reflected in its simplicity, with minimal ingredients and a focus on using what's readily available in the environment. For this dish, the chicken is stuffed into a bamboo vessel along with sour leaves. It's seasoned with just a pinch of salt and a splash of water. Then it's all left to cook slowly over an open fire. Banana leaves are cleverly used as a lid for the bamboo. There's an added flavor from the bamboo, so it tastes different when you put it on the regular bowl. Even when you put soft drinks on it, it has a different flavor. I'm sorry, so you're like putting Sprite <laughs> in bamboo? Yes. <laughs> and coffee. For our starch, what? some plantains, cassava, and taro hit the I fire until like they're they inside soft enough. Can coffee. we try some taro to start with? I yes. want to, you know, ease. Taro hit the fire until they're inside soft. For our starch, some plantains, cassava, and taro hit the fire until they're right, taro, inside soft enough. Like? Can we try some taro? to start with, I yes. want to, you know, ease my way into this meal. What the fuck is that? Is that like, mm, that's good. There's something almost spicy to it, like eating a radish. Very nice. But with that said, let's get into some of this protein. The soup has been removed. It's more of a dry soup at this point, uh -huh. but the broth has been put into these bamboo, bamboo tubes, right? Yep. Juicy. Let me try some of this leaf. Mm. 
Oh yeah, that's sour. You know, there's different types of sour. There's like sour citrus, like lemon or lime, but then there's like sour fermented. That's what that tastes like. Height of vinegar, that's why they call it. Oh, really? Here, this is a broth that goes with it, right? Yeah. Cheers. Oh wow, that's a fascinating flavor. It's a mixture of the fat that boiled out of the chicken, the sourness from the leaves, and it's the smokiness from the fire. You know the cup? Uh, American glass. Because it has a space for your nose, it will not touch your nose. Because Filipinos have flatter noses? <laughs> yes. Is that what you're saying? But I got a big honker right here. Yeah. <laughs> I, that, that, that is very generous though. At least they would consider it. You know the cup? Uh, American glass. Because it has a space for your nose, it will not touch your nose. Because Filipinos have flatter noses? Is <laughs> yes. that what you're saying? But I got a big honker right here. Yeah. Sam specializes in social and community development. He's deeply committed to promoting and preserving Aita culture, an integral part of his upbringing. Soon, we'll go hunting with an aim to capture some more of the most like, exotic um, food we can find in the jungle. Like, uh, oh, yeah. okay. Hawaiian. Yep. But before that, we've got one much more palatable food to try. Alas, here we have the fire grilled chicken. First, the legs, head, and organs are removed. Then the chicken is stuffed with lemongrass and local leaves called tanglan. Season it with a bit of salt, put it on a skewer, and grill it beyond well done. I'm gonna grab a leg. Oh my god. This is like that marathon chicken, right? Yeah. It's been walking around a lot, a little bit more tough. The dark meat's nice and juicy, but this type of chicken is always dense. It's always chewy. But folks here seem to like that, right? Even when we boil it, we want it a little chewy. And why is that? It's the practice of protecting your teeth. Mm -hmm. Look at my nanay. Yeah, complete set of two. Let's see those teeth. <laughs> Pretty good. So you grew up here in this village? Six, eight years old. Oh, wow. Looking great. The Aita people are indigenous to the Luzon region. Apart from their traditions, their physical characteristics distinguish them from other tribal groups on this vast and diverse archipelago. What is the size of this village? How many people are here? 500 families. That's bordering on a town. It's believed they arrived here long ago by way of land bridges that once connected the Philippines with mainland Asia. When she was young, you know, 50 years ago, I'm sure the food that people were eating was a lot different, a lot more traditional. Mm -hmm. And today, that's really what we want to focus on, especially when it comes to foraging. Can we try bats? Bats. Bats. You like it? <laughs> I don't know how excited I am for bats. I have had bats before, and they were okay. Have you ever tried bats? 10 years old, 10 years old she's eating. So what do you like about it? She loves the bat wings. Bat wings or chicken wings? What do you prefer? Paniki. Me too. Oh my gosh. Damn, bat wings over chicken wings. Oh, what this the is wild. What kind of a region of village where they prefer bat wings over chicken wings. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. Aita communities have long been hunters and gatherers, possessing extensive knowledge of the tropical forests they call home. Historical illustrations often depict them wielding bows and arrows or spears when pursuing prey. However, when it comes to hunting bats, they employ a different technique. We will be using thorns of uh, ratan. Ratan is ratan. a vine leaf tree. It has a lot of thorns on it. Is there a certain amount that you're hoping to get today? I mean, one is pretty good. We could just, or even half of one. It's at least five. After a one-hour hike from the village, we arrive at a small hide. cave. That's from the cave, bro. When a dying no uncle, or sick uncle, or grandmother, anybody who is sick in the family, sometimes when they request you to hunt, then you have to because that's their like a dying wish. Sometimes. They don't die. They become stronger after, after eating, eating the bat yep. meat. So it, its effects can be that profound. It's not just yep. about food, but it's also about tradition, tradition, about customs, and also about healing. The bat yeah. species we're targeting here is different from the greater short-nosed fruit bat I encountered in Indonesia. We're after the lesser short-nosed fruit bat. <laughs> Oh my God. A species predominantly found in tropical regions of Southeast Asia. Can we focus the lights there on that one hole? Their diet primarily consists of small fruit along with nectar and pollen. Right now we're... Bruh, what in the entire fuck? That should look like Batman cave, my nigga. This is literally like Batman's fucking cave. They're not, they can, they can, they, they are not, they, they are not in this, they are not in this cave with, with all these fucking bats like this, can't be, can't be. 
Their diet primarily consists of small fruit along with nectar and pollen. Right now we're doing what I call my worst fucking nightmare. This is a very small cave and right now his team is outside both entrances with nets and we're inside. Our job is to scare them out. Oh my god. Okay. Can I use a knife or something? Right now he's equipped with a bamboo rod and I have a knife. I'm trying to make bad kebabs in here. After several attempts, it appears the net technique is not working out, and these bats won't be returning anytime soon. I don't want to admit it, but this is starting to look like a failed mission. Sadly, our mission today was Damn. not triumphant. Do you know what you call a bat cave with no bats? Just a cave. They got out of there quickly. You see, one side, we had a giant net on. Yeah, that side, that's the net. The other side, and I'm not sure about the strategy, the other side they had nothing. So, stay with me. The bats were like, well, we should just fly through the side where there's nothing. So they just left. I'm of two minds about not having to eat the bats. On one hand, I don't have to eat the bats. On the other hand, I'm still curious about this ancient tradition. Nonetheless, there's a surprise. don't fear. Uh oh. The locals here won't let me leave without a wild experience. <laughs> But before all that, Sam has something to show me. So we didn't get bats, but um, it looks like you've got this already. Yeah, we hunted. <laughs> this is the Philippine long-tailed macaque. How long since it was born? Roughly around three months. Rest assured, we're not dealing with an endangered species here. And personally, I'm not too keen on trying this particular monkey. What is the method? Bro, y'all are fucking eating a fucking... Mm, just like eating a fucking human, literally. It's like eating a human, bro. This shit is like eating a human, you fucking cannibals, bro. For actually catching that. Bumble trap. Can I pick it up? Sure. Why is he not biting me? Because. Oh, okay, fair you enough. You look like human. I thought you were gonna say I look like one of them. <laughs> it's trying to sleep. It actually seems pretty chilled out and relaxed. It looks like it just smoked two joints. Do some people keep these as pets? Yes. But they also eat them. Yes, it's actually when it's Holy Week, we go to the forest for hunt. The monkeys will make our elderly stronger. I definitely can eat this one because I've made a connection. Yes. It looked into my eyes, I saw its innocence. It thinks yeah. I'm its dad. Can we name him Sonny? Yeah, you can name it Sonny, Sonny Jr. Okay, yep, you're good. We had a great time. Definitely we can't eat this monkey. I've bonded with it, we have a close relationship, but luckily you have pieces of frozen monkey in a freezer. Yep. And that is said to be part of our final feast. How do you come to terms with the fact that on one side, you're helping animals, rescuing them, rehabilitating them, and on the other side, you're going out and hunting them for consumption? But before we get to that, I'm taking a slight detour. Where was this found? In the forest. Revealing is... a reptile they caught two days ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, my Seems God. Seems a couple of lizards. This one's hogtied. This one has its back legs free. Be Holy... careful with the bite. Yeah, they do bite. Oh, my gosh. It's just like a snake. It's a monitor lizard. How do you trap these? Put some rotten meat and then set the trap there. What is the best way to cook up lizard? Adobo. Adobo. That is fascinating because adobo is probably one of the most popular food preparation styles in the Philippines. But I would say few people have had adobo with this inside. Adobo cooking goes way back in the Philippines. Originally, it was a way to preserve meat in this tropical climate. And since the Spanish left their mark, it became the adobo we know today. A process typically involving chicken, pork, or seafood. But I'm about to find out. You can adobo just about anything. First, our cook begins by frying garlic and onions in oil. She adds the meat, already chopped into pieces and cleared of any unwanted bits. Next comes the essential adobo ingredients, soy sauce and vinegar. Let it simmer until it turns a rich brown hue. Have you ever had lizard adobo? Hosting us in her traditional home, an elder of the Aita tribe, Adobo sounds like a fucking... Done. She had lizard uh, before, but it's the sour soup. There's three piles. Do we each get one pile? Mine, yours, and hers. Oh, you guys gave me the biggest <laughs> pile. It's almost like a sticky glaze on the outside, but the meat is actually quite soft. Oh, she's grabbing from my pile. Let's try it out. When someone dig on your plate is an honor. Nice, and Nice. Nice. That flavoring is amazing. A soy sauce glaze, a slight sourness. I gotta say, this is delectable. The only thing is, 
a lot of them. So the flavor, it's a light sourness. I got it. Nice. Nice. That flavoring is amazing. When someone dig on your plate is an honor. Nice. And nice. Nice. That flavoring is amazing. A honor. Sauce. I, I, I say that selfish. She got her own fucking meal by us. The same, the same exact meal is in her fucking face. Women. Glaze. A slight yeah. sourness. I gotta say, this is delectable. The only thing is, a lot of bones. So the flavor, it's a little chickeny. It's not 100% like chicken. It's more springy. It's got skin in each bite, and the skin is a little rubbery. This is some of the best lizard I've ever had in my life. Please, Mary. Enjoy some more. Mary has called this house her home for 30 years. Its construction was a community effort. We need at least five men to cut some bamboo to cover the house. And so why do some folks have houses like this and why do some have a concrete house? Preference and also the situations in life. If you could change something about your house, what would you change? She wished that before she died or left her family, at least they're living in a comfortable house. Concrete. Mm. With the progress that's been made over time, at least during your lifetime, what progress do you see that there is still to be made? What I really want to see is the changes, the way we see the point of view of looking to the ITAS. Because most of the time we are called BMW. BMW means bobo, mangmang, and walang alam, meaning uh, we, we don't know anything, if not possible. At least the uh, discriminations against us, the ITA people, at least we have more opportunities to be in the universities. That's what I think is the best. Help ITAS get a Education, get them the profession they need, then everything will follow. For our final meal, Dandy returns Damn. with a handful of monkey meat from his freezer. That is a sentence I never imagined that I would utter. The monkey will be prepared in two distinct ways. The first method embraces a classic Filipino technique known as kinilaw, akin to a Filipino version of ceviche. Though fortunately, in this case, there will be no raw meat. Is this something you've seen people in your tribe eating from the time you were young? Yeah. After briefly grilling, the monkey meat is chopped into small pieces. Are there any particular diseases that can come from eating monkey? Ebola. Ebola. But that's not okay. proven. Shallots, garlic, and ginger are finally... You can get fucking Ebola for eating fucking monkey. Ebola. Ebola. This is crazy, bro. Any dice then given a quick cook on the fire together with the meat. You've never heard of anybody getting sick? Uh, no. It makes them stronger. Ordinarily, kini lao doesn't involve this extra step of actual cooking. But given that this is monkey meat, it feels like the perfect time to veer away from tradition. Gentlemen, look, I gotta say, I've had monkey before. I can't say it was a great experience, but it was an experience that I'm glad I had. And I thought, why would I just eat monkey again when I can also make my friend Chewy eat monkey for the first time Ever. Yes, man. I don't know what I'm doing here. So you largely have a Filipino audience. Yeah. How do you think they would react to you eating this? This will be like really, really extreme. But at the same time, we're doing this like to educate them. That's it. I think we should start with the kinilaw. Kinilaw. Okay. But first, we need rice. To pair with the protein, some rice cooked the traditional pinulo style inside a bamboo stalk. This is my favorite part of today, actually. <laughs> Fantastic. Moved up. It smells good. It smells like lemongrass. It smells sour. I don't know, but my heart is beating right now. That means you're alive, so that's okay. good. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, it's kind of on the rubbery side. Crazy chewy. It's good. It's like eating goat. I agree. It's a bit gamey. There's some funk to it. The charcoal had like burnt hair in it, yeah. and so it, this has some burnt that's hair flavor. Exactly, yeah. And that is what, to me, makes it taste unlike other meats I've had. I just got a random question because I asked Jojo earlier. He said, have you eaten monkey? He said, oh no, it's not part of our sub-tribe. We're not eating it. He came from a Magindi tribe and they don't usually eat it. The sambals, we eat it. Not everybody is eating this. Not everybody. And even within this village, the woman at breakfast too yeah. said that she liked bat wings. When she saw the lizard, she was like, no thanks. So a lot of it is based on culture, but also personal preference. Yeah. There is no more classic way to cook meat than to just throw it on the fire. The second approach is straightforward, mirroring the Aita lifestyle. Season the meat with salt and grill it over an open flame. This is essentially a monkey drumstick. It's well done, it tastes charred. Oh my God, it looks like it was cooked medium. Yeah. Beef jerky. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
deer. Yeah, I agree. It tastes like venison. Very different experience to what we just had over here. Definitely. Crazy salty, borderline jerky, very dense, but not too tough. Visually, it's like you're eating like just a, a chicken, but when you taste it, it has a little bit of pungent, toasty flavor. It's like weird at the same time, it's familiar also. There's almost a, a beefiness to mm, it. Exactly, yeah. Red meat. Yeah. My understanding is that you also have a role in protecting these animals too, is that correct? Absolutely. So Dundee is working with wind, uh, wildlife uh, in need. Wind is a risk isn't it? Yeah, all of the damaged animals and disabled, cut hands and blind eyes. Wind is preparing them to become at least free for themselves and that they can put back in the wild. How do you come to terms with the oh, fact no that wind. on one side you're helping animals, rescuing them, rehabilitating them, and on the other side you're going out and hunting them for consumption? So there are protected areas and there are certain areas where we are allowed to hunt. Permitted by the government, we know how to hunt, when to hunt, Wait, and how it is being done like in the process. It. It's just a minimal amount. As long as we know that the animals that we're hunting are not Please, part of the endangered too? species, we're still hunting it. Gentlemen, Dandy, Sam, I gotta say, this was an incredible experience. Oh yeah, just sit there. Uh, I have a surprise for you. Grandma, sit there. There's a surprise? Come here. Oh, hi there. You wanna do the honor? Open it. <sighs> Jaran! Bat wings. First, Dandy begins by charring the bats over a fire to remove their fur. We already went bat hunting. There were no bats. Where'd you get bats from? You have a bat dealer? Dandy's friends. Oh. My friend. He then detaches the wings from their bodies and prepares for two separate dishes. We have to prepare for the visitor. To welcome you. I feel so welcomed. The bat bodies are cooked in a traditional manner, grilled over an open flame. After grilling, the meat is washed and carefully chopped to discard any undesirable parts. Have you ever had bat? Not yet, man. You're just like a young gear like Yeah. For me, it's eh, my third bat experience. Are you to start? Trying first a pot simmers with sour leaves, Set cucumbers, and lemongrass. So. Into this fragrant broth, the bat will I know, they hear you though. Of salt. They simmer away until the uniquely surreal stew has been brought shit into around fruition. This bitch while I'm watching the motherfucking reaction, nigga. No, I got a few more, few more, few more minutes, for Three more minutes, for Go to this motherfucking video. This morning, the precious Rosario said that if she had a fuck truth... You, fuck you gotta do that, that your ass gotta work. Gotta, gotta hurry up, nigga. Me ain't got shit to do, my nigga. Between chicken wings and bat wings, it's bat man. wings all day. Oh, really? So, please. Uh... Oh, hey, should I get one? A bat wing is very different from a chicken wing because it's more like a hand stretched out and then between the fingers is the rubbery material of the wing. So I'm ripping off some of that rubber. Okay, cheers. cheers, my friend. Hey, it's cold. This is one hell of a mm. meal, dude. So far, the rice is my favorite part. What? There's something... What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? They just ate a fucking bat wing, bro. And he said the rice is my favorite part. So a bat wing must be fucking disgusting, bro. Who the fuck eats bat wings? Who the fuck eats bat? Rubbery about the wing. It's like someone's taking an inner tube and boiled it for 10 hours until it got exactly. soft. Am I the only one, but this is like more pungent compared to the monkey. It has like a sour... I think that might be the sour leaves. Oh yeah, maybe that. Also, man, bats are pungent because they just piss on themselves every night. Oh, that... These guys, they don't have good eyes. It's all about ears and nose. So right here we have a bat sour soup. It's like a bat stock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, I respect the hell out of you. Not for me. It's like the worst lemonade ever. Mmm, pure sourness. That's what it tastes like. I'm so happy we got to go full circle. You know, today we went bat hunting. We didn't get anything. I was disheartened. I was distraught. But here we are. At the end of the day, the perfect book end to this video. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. You're always welcome here. Thank you, sir. Sunday! W, w video. W, I need, I need, I need some merch. Chat, I need some merch, bro. Y'all gotta invest in the nigga so I can get some merch, man. W video. That wasn't the, that wasn't the, 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 the more discussing <coughs> them last video, so W Sunny, man. W Sunny.